the state of innocence and fall of man excerpt by john dryden sixteen thirty one to seventeen hundred read for LibriVox .org. act four scene one paradise the cloud descends with six angels in it and when it is near the ground breaks and on each side discovers six more they descend out of the cloud raphael and gabriel discourse with adam the rest stand at a distance raphael first of mankind that we from heaven are sent is from heaven's care thy ruin to prevent the apostate angel has by night been here and whispered through thy sleeping consort's ear delusive dreams thus warned by us beware and guide her frailty by thy timely care gabriel these as thy guards from outward harms are sent ills from within thy reason must prevent adam natives of heaven who in compassion deign to want that place where joys immortal reign in care of me what praises can i pay descended in obedience taught to obey Raphael, praise him alone who godlike formed thee free with will unbounded as a deity who gave the reason as thy aid to choose apparent good and evil to refuse obedience is that good this heaven exacts and heaven all just from man requires not acts which man wants power to do power then is given of doing good but not compelled by heaven gabriel made good that thou dost to thy maker owe but to thyself if thou continuest so adam freedom of will of all good things is best but can it be by finite man possessed i know not how heaven can communicate what equals man to his creator's state raphael heaven cannot give his boundless power away but boundless liberty of choice he may so orbs from the first mover motion take yet each their proper revolutions make adam grant heaven could once have given us liberty are we not bounded now by firm decree since whatsoe'er is preordained must be else heaven for man events must preordain and man's free will might make those orders vain gabriel the eternal when he did the world create all other agents did necessitate so what he ordered they by nature do thus light things mount and heavy downward go man only boasts an arbitrary state adam yet causes their effects necessitate in willing agents where is freedom then or who can break the chain which limits men to act what is unchangeably forecast since the first cause gives motion to the last raphael heaven by foreknowing what will surely be does only first effects in causes see and finds but does not make necessity creation is of power and will the effect for knowledge only of his intellect his prescience makes not but supposes things infers necessity to be not brings thus thou art not constrained to good or ill causes which work the effect force not the will adam the force unseen and distant i confess but the long chain makes not the bondage less even man himself may to himself seem free and think that choice which is necessity gabriel and who but man should judge of man's free state adam i find that i can choose to love or hate obey or disobey do good or ill yet such a choice is but consent not will i can but choose what he at first designed for he before that choice my will confined 
Gabriel. Such impious fancies, where they entrance gain, make heaven all pure, thy crimes to preordain. Adam. Far, far from me be banished such a thought. I argue only to be better taught. Can there be freedom when what now seems free was founded on some first necessity? For what ere cause can move the will to elect must be sufficient to produce the effect. And what sufficient must effectual be? Then how is man thus forced by causes free? Raphael sufficient causes only work the effect when necessary agents they respect such is not man who though the cause suffice yet often he his free assent denies adam what causes not is not sufficient still gabriel sufficient in itself not in thy will raphael when we see causes joined to effects at last, the chain but shows necessity that's past. Then what's done is ridiculous proof of fate. Tell me which part it does necessitate. I'll cruise the other, then I'll link the effect. O oh, chain, which fools to catch themselves project. Adam, though no constraint from heaven or causes be, heaven may prevent that ill he does foresee and not preventing though he does not cause he seems to will that men should break his laws gabriel heaven may permit but not to ill consent for hindering ill we would all choice prevent twere to unmake to take away the will adam better constrained to good than free to ill Raphael, but what reward or punishment could be if man to neither good or ill were free? The eternal justice could decree no pain to him whose sins itself did first ordain. And good compelled could no reward exact. His power would shine in goodness, not thy act. Our task is done. Obey, and in that choice, Thou shalt be blessed, and angels shall rejoice. Raphael and Gabriel fly up in the cloud. The other angels go off. Adam, hard state of life. Since heaven foreknows my will, why am I not tied up from doing ill? Why am I trusted with myself at large, when he's more able to sustain the charge? Since angels fell, whose strength was more than mine, T'would show more grace my frailty to confine. For knowing the success, to leave me free, Excuses him, and yet supports not me. End of excerpt. This recording is in the public domain.